Okay, so today we're going to cover chapter P, section two still, but it'll be day four. And today we're going to learn about simplifying radicals. So what we're going to do to simplify radicals, since we're not using a calculator yet, you're going to use a factor tree to simplify radicals. So whenever your index is a two, it's going to be a square root. So what you're looking for are two numbers that will multiply um, to give you that number. So for example, if I have the 20 here, and if I do a factor tree for it, doesn't matter what you start with, whether you start with two times 10 or four times five, we're gonna keep breaking this 20 down until it's prime. So for example, if I start with two times 10, then this two is prime, the 10 is not, so I need to break it down one more time. And then now that I have all prime factors, I look for pairs. I have a pair of twos, a two comes out because the pair creates a perfect square. And then anything that doesn't pair up stays under the radical. So you'll be leaving all of your answers in simplest radical form. Now, some of you who are gonna be really good at noticing factors that are perfect squares, for example, if you would have done four and five to begin with instead of two and 10, and if you recognize four was a perfect square, you could just square root it and go right to the answer. We will do this so often that this will become automatic for you. When you multiply two numbers that are under a radical or under a square root, all you have to do is as long as the indexes are the same, like two square roots or two cube roots, all you do is take the two numbers that are underneath that square root symbol and multiply them together. And this would give you the square root of six. Now, if it were, for example, the square root of two times the cube root of, say, seven, you couldn't do this. They need to be exactly the same type of root in order to multiply them. When you divide two square roots or two cube roots, Again, the indexes must be the same. And for example, on this one, I could simplify, I could divide 10 by five, and then I would get the square root of two. So you can simplify just like if it were a fraction, but it still stays under the square root symbol. Now, if you're good at recognizing perfect squares, so like for example, perfect squares, what I mean by that are one to the second power, two to the second power, three to the second power. And then if you look for factors that are these numbers, it makes breaking down the radical a little bit easier. So let's try some examples of simplifying non-perfect squares. Okay, so for here, the instructions are to simplify. So in other words, I want you to do a factor tree and leave this in simplest radical form. Now for 28, you can either start with two times 14, four times seven. It doesn't matter if you're gonna keep breaking it down until you're prime. So for example, if I were to start with 28 and start with two times 14, two's prime, but 14's not. So I would have to keep going on the 14 and make it two times seven. And then now that my bottom row is all prime, I look for pairs. This turns into a perfect square. You don't need to worry about multiplying it back. Just pull the two out. And then the seven that doesn't have a pair stays underneath. Now, if you recognize that 28 could have been four times seven, and then here you just square root the four, and then it would go right to the answer. So again, if you find a factor that's a perfect square, you don't really necessarily have to keep breaking it down till prime. But if you like to stay consistent and then always break it all the way down to prime, then do that. Do whatever's gonna work best for you. Now, for 48, there's a bunch of different ways to multiply to get a 48. For me, the fastest way would be to do 16 times three and then just break down the square root of 16 is four, and then the radical three. But probably more likely than not, you might have said, well, I know 
to multiply to get a 48, I'm going to do 6 times 8. And in this particular example, you'd have to keep breaking it down till it's prime. It works. Again, the more practice you do, the more automatic the breaking down of these radicals are going to become. So this, I'm going to just keep breaking it down or bringing it down because it's prime. But then the 4 I still got to do. And now I go back and I look for pairs. So I have a pair of twos here. I also have another pair of twos over here. They're not side by side, but they still make a pair. So everything that pairs up comes out. Anything that does not pair up, you leave underneath. And then everything that comes out gets multiplied back together, and then you would leave the three. Notice, same answer I got when I just did 16 times three. You could have also done four times 12. Um, you could have done two times 24, but again, you're gonna keep breaking it down till it's prime. Now, for number three, notice we already broke down 48. So we already know on number three, I've got the two that's sitting outside here, but then I gotta break down the 48. So this actually simplifies, we just did it, four square root three. So now I have two, which is already out there, times the square root, four times the square root of three. Everything that's outside gets multiplied and anything that's left behind under the radical stays there. For number four, 45. So here, let me just rewrite it here. I'm gonna do a factor tree for the 45. Now the six is already there. For the 45, I'm gonna do nine times five. Now, if you recognize nine's a perfect square, then just square root it. But if you didn't, you can keep breaking it down till it's prime. But if you recognized it, then I would just bring the six down, square root the nine, and it becomes a three. The five can't be broken down, and there's no pairs for it. Multiply everything that's outside of the radical now, and then leave the five underneath. So again, I've already got a 14 outside, but I've got a 75 inside. So for my factor tree, I could either do 25 times three or five times 15. Doesn't matter. If I do five times 15, I gotta keep breaking it down till it's prime. But if I do 25 and three, I know 25 is a perfect square. But let's say you didn't recognize it and you had to do five times five, 14 still here. You got your pair of fives. A five comes out. So it's going to get multiplied to the 14 that's already out there. This square root of three stays underneath. And now you'll do 14 times five. You get 70 square root three. For number six, same thing. We're going to break down the 125. So the 10's already out. 125, I know that 25 times five, five quarters is $1.25. So then now I can either keep breaking it down till it's prime. So again, make the 25, five and five. Bring this five down. The 10 is already out. Look for a pair. I've got a pair of fives here. So the five comes out and it's going to get multiplied to the 10 that's out there. And this five that didn't pair up, he stays underneath. So final answer here, 10 times five is 50 square root five. Same thing on seven. We've already got a five outside but we need to go ahead and break down the 600. So when I factor the 600, I'm gonna do the square root of six times the square root of 100. Now, if you recognize that 100 is a perfect square, you could just square root it. But if you didn't, you're gonna keep breaking it down. So five, this will become two and three, still under the square roots. This could become 10 and 10. 
and then you'll keep breaking it down. Two and five, two and five. But again, you're gonna get good at these where you're not gonna have to go all the way to prime. You could have just found the square root of 100 and put the 10 there right at the beginning. So now I gotta look for pairs. I got a pair of twos here and I got a pair of fives. So this five was already out and then I'll pull out the two. I pull out the five and then anything else that didn't pair up, this three and this two, they're still underneath and you're gonna multiply those together. So five times two times five is 50, and then the two times three is six. So anything that's left under a radical that doesn't pair up, you leave under the radical and multiply it back. For number eight, whenever you're multiplying two radicals, again, remember they both need to be square roots or cube roots, the index has to be the same. So when you go to multiply this, you're gonna multiply the two numbers that are outside together. So five times two is 10, and then you'll multiply the two numbers under the square root. But notice I made a pair. So this is three times three is nine, and then the square root of nine is three. Or if you recognize that it's a pair, just pull it out. And then the final answer here is just 30. If you would have rather shown that it was 10 times the square root of nine, and then you got to square root it, you can do that as well. But it's a lot easier. As soon as you see you have two of the same square roots, just pull it out of the radical. Don't waste your time multiplying it back. So for the next one, whenever they ask you to simplify a bunch of radicals, I highly recommend that you don't go through here and multiply five, five, and nine. If you do that, you're gonna get 225. And if you don't recognize that 225 is a perfect square, then you're still gonna to have to go back and factor it. This is actually a perfect square. 15 times 15 is 225. But what I recommend you do is leave it unmultiplied. I got a pair of fives here, so a five comes out, and then three, nine is a perfect square, square root it, and then three times five, 15. Notice the same answer when I multiplied it and then I had to find the square root. If you didn't know 225 was a perfect square, you'd have to go back and do a factor tree. Same thing on number 10. I'm not gonna multiply 11 times 44 because if I do that, I get the square root of 484. That's not a perfect square, or it is a perfect square. It's actually 22. But again, we're not using calculators. So what you're better off doing is factor it. 44 is 11 times 4. Notice I got a pair of 11s. That comes out. And then the square root of 4 is 2. Multiply it. 22. The next one, if you were to multiply 11 times 33, you're gonna get 363. This is not a perfect square. So again, you're better off factoring it. So leave the square root of 11, it's prime. Break the 33 into 11 times 33, 11 times three. You got a pair of 11s, comes out of the square root. The poor three doesn't have a pair so he stays underneath. So remember, whenever you have a fraction, it really means to division, to divide. So here, I can simplify what's under the radical. You can simplify stuff under the radical with something else under a radical or something outside the square root with something outside. So here, I'm gonna simplify. I'm gonna divide both of these by seven. Just what's under the radical. So then seven divided by seven gives me one, and then 35 divided by seven gives me a five. The square root of one is one. So this really turns into six times one over the square root of five. So now I'm left with six 
over the square root of five. Now, if you remember back from your geometry days when we did special right triangles, we worked with square root twos and square root threes quite often. Remember, the rule in math is you can never ever leave a square root in the bottom of a fraction. What we have to do to get rid of it is something called rationalizing the denominator. My goal here is to make this denominator a perfect square. And the easy way, easiest way to do it is multiply by itself. Because when I multiply the square root of five times the square root of five, I got a pair of square root fives and it comes out of the radical. Essentially what I'm doing here, this square root of five over square root of five, this is really equivalent to one. So really all I'm doing here is multiplying that fraction by a one, but it is gonna change the look of it. So now I'll just multiply straight across, six times the square root of five. I just write them side by side because the six is out of the radical, the five's under it, and then the pair of fives in the bottom here, it just releases the five from the radical. That process is called rationalizing the denominator. You can never ever leave a square root in the bottom of a fraction. Let's try the next one. Again, I'm gonna simplify this. I can actually divide them both by three. And once I reduce that, I end up with five square root 16 over the square root of 13. Because 48 divided by three is 16 and 39 divided by three is 13. Now I can also simplify the square root of 16. It's a perfect square. So five times four, I still have that square root of 13 in the denominator. So I need to rationalize again. And again, to get rid of that square root of 13 in the bottom, I'm gonna multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the square root of 13. And then the final answer, when I multiply 20 times the square root of 13, I just put them side by side, but those pair of 13s in the bottom releases that 13 from the radical. 13. We're multiplying a square root into a binomial. I'm just going to apply my distributive property. So I'm going to distribute the square root of five to the square root of five. The square root of five times the square root of five is the square root of 25. Or again, don't multiply it. It's a pair of square root fives, pull it out. And then I also have to distribute the square root of five to this negative two. Again, the two is out of a radical, the five is under it. So you just put it side by side. I cannot combine the two and the five because this five doesn't have a radical. The only way I could combine those numbers outside of the square root is if that five had a square root of five with it. So that would be your final answer. For the next one, we're gonna multiply all of the numbers that are outside of the square root together. So I'm gonna multiply three times negative two times positive three, and this is gonna give me negative 18. Now, as far as the numbers under the radical, I'm not gonna multiply two, eight, and 27, and then I'm gonna get 432, and then I gotta go back and break it down. I'm gonna leave those radicals alone, and I'm gonna do a factor tree for each of them. And then I'm gonna look for pairs. So the two's already prime. The eight is not. I can make this two times four, and then I still gotta break down the four and make it two and two. The 27, I can break it down to three times nine. And then the nine, I need to break down to three times three. Now I go back and look for pairs. I have a pair of twos here, a two comes out. I've got another pair of twos here, another two comes out. That's not showing up, let me use a different color here. 
make it blue. So this pair of twos becomes a two. Then I also have a pair of threes. So a three comes out. This poor last little three here doesn't have any pair, so he stays underneath. So now I'm gonna multiply everything that came out. So I'm gonna multiply two, two, and three. This will give me 12 square root three. I now can multiply negative 18 times 12, and this gives me negative 216 square root three. So when you multiply things that have a square root, you multiply the numbers that are outside the root together and then what's inside together. If you would have multiplied this two, this eight and this 27, it would have given you 432. And then you would have had to have gone back and done a factor tree anyways. So it's a lot easier, leave it unfactored and then start breaking down those numbers that you were expected to multiply. Let's try 16. Again, I'm gonna simplify the fraction first. I can simplify six over 90. I can divide them both by 15. So this will become 15. So if I divide, I'm sorry, divide them both by six. And then this gives me square root of one over the square root of 15. The square root of one is one, so it's really just 15 in the numerator. Again, I can never ever leave a square root in the bottom. I have to rationalize. So multiply the numerator and the denominator by that square root in the bottom. The numerator, the outside, and then the inside, and then the bottom, these were a pair, it comes out. Now, notice I can simplify these two numbers that are outside because 15 divided by 15, I can change these to ones. So my final answer here is just the square root of 15. Put a wrote over it. Let me rewrite number 17 down here. So for number 17, it's got eight square root three minus six square root three. I'm gonna subtract. Whenever I subtract or add square roots, treat them like a variable. So think of this as being eight X minus six X. Think of this square root of three like a variable. So then all you do is subtract the coefficients. This would give me two X. So this problem gives me two square root three. So when you add and subtract, think of the square roots as variables you can only subtract like square roots. Let's try some more examples of adding and subtracting. Now, if it's not presented as the same radical, you may have to break down the radical first. All right, so at first glance on number 18, you may think, I can't do this problem. They don't have like radicals. However, I can break down the square root of 24, and then I'll have a like radical. So I'm gonna break down and do a factor tree for the 24. I can break this into four times six. Let me rewrite everything else. Then I gotta square root the four. You can either keep breaking it down till it's prime, but I already can recognize that the four is gonna become a two. The six I can't break down because it'll be two times three and no pairs left. Rewrite the rest of the problem. Now multiply this and I get negative four times the square root of six. And now I have like radicals. So now I just have to do negative four minus three and I get negative seven square root six. We're gonna do the same thing on 19. We need to break down the square root of 45 and the square root of 36. So for the square root, okay. So for here, I need to break down the 45. So I can go ahead and know that 45 is nine times five. Now this 36, this is a perfect square. It's six times six. So I'm just gonna pull out a six. 
And then now I'll pull out the square root of nine is three. And then I'm gonna multiply the seven and the six. And then here I'll multiply the three and the three. And notice the 42 does not have a square root of five, so that's my final answer. I cannot add the 42 and the nine because the 42 doesn't have the same square root. It has no root. For number 20, we're gonna do the same thing. Now, notice I did not do a full factor tree. If you still need to see the whole factor tree when you're breaking down those radicals, then by all means, continue to do that. 20, again, I gotta break down the 32 and the 63. And again, if you need to do a whole factor tree for say the square root of 32, I know that 16 times two is 32. So it's gonna be four square root two. But let's say instead you didn't recognize that and you did four times eight. Then you gotta keep breaking it down. You're still gonna get the same answer even if you keep going until it's prime and then here, two, 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 two. And then you only have, you have a pair of twos here and a pair of twos here. So that's how you get the four square root two. All right, so for the 32, so again, what I'm doing here is breaking this down into 16 times two. And then I'll square root the 16, it becomes a four. And then I end up with 12 square root two. Now I have to work on the 63. The 63 I know is nine times seven. And then I also recognize that the square root of nine is three, or you could break it down into three and three and then pull the pair out. Seven is prime. Go ahead and multiply the four and the three, and then the square root of seven. Notice these two are unlike radicals. So that is my simplified answer. I can't do anything else with it. The only way I could have combined it is if they both had a square root of two or they both had the square root of seven. For the next one, it is a uh, multiplying two binomials. I don't know if your algebra one teacher taught you the acronym FOIL. You can use that or you could just distribute. So what I'm gonna do is multiply the first or the, distribute the four to the four, I get 16. Then distribute the four to the negative square root of 11. Then now I'm gonna move over to the square root of 11, multiply it to the four. And then lastly, go ahead and multiply the square root of 11 to the square root of 11, or negative square root of 11, it's a pair of square roots, and the 11 comes out. Remember, whenever you multiply two binomials, you can always combine these middle terms, but in this case, they cancel out. So now I'm just left with 16 minus 11, and my answer is five. This is gonna lead us into the conjugate when we're gonna see when we have a binomial in the bottom of a fraction. Now for number 22, notice this is a binomial that is squared. Now, you can't just say I'm gonna put the exponent here and here. What we need to do is write this binomial twice and then foil it. So three square root seven minus the square root of three. I'm gonna write it once, and then I'm gonna write it again. And now I'm gonna distribute or use my acronym FOIL. So I'm gonna multiply the first term, which gives me nine times seven, because I got a pair of sevens, the radical disappeared. Then next I'm gonna do the three square root seven to the square root of three, and I get three square root 21, then I'm gonna do the inside, or the inner, so I'm gonna multiply negative square root three to three square root seven, which gives me three square root 21, and then finally last, 
square root three, negative square root three times negative square root three is positive three. It's a pair of square root threes. Now I'm gonna multiply this, I get 63. I'm gonna combine these two middle guys. This gives me negative six square root 21, and then I still have the plus three. I need to combine my like terms here. 63 plus three is 66 minus six square root 21. I cannot combine the 66 and the six because they, the 66 doesn't have a like term or a like radical. I multiply the three and the three, and then I had a pair of sevens, which make the seven come out. So three times three, nine, and then the pair of square root sevens becomes a seven. All right, next we're gonna talk about rationalizing, which I already showed you, so I'm just gonna do some more examples. All right, so when you divide radicals, the square root must be eliminated from the denominator. So we can never ever leave a radical in the bottom. We have to rationalize. So again, whatever you're gonna do is you're trying to make that denominator a perfect square, and generally the easiest way to do it is just to multiply it by itself. So for example, on this one, multiply top and bottom by square root two, you get five square root two over two. When you rationalize an expression that has a binomial in the bottom or the denominator with a radical, you're gonna, add, or you're gonna multiply by the opposite expression. So what I'm gonna multiply by here is two minus the square root of three to both the numerator and the denominator. So what I need to do is foil the bottom and then distribute the top. So two times two is four. Two times negative root three gives me two times two root three. And then the denominator, essentially the shortcut, all you have to do is first and last, but let me show you the whole thing. First gives me four, two to this gives me negative two root three. The inside, gives me positive two root three, and then finally last, minus three. Notice the inner and the outer cancel, so then I'm just left with four minus three, which is one, and then the final answer here is just four minus two square root three. This is the process called multiplying by its conjugate. Okay, we have four more examples. And again, remember you can never ever leave a square root in the bottom of a fraction, so we're gonna rationalize. I need to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by that square root of three. Remember, you can multiply something under a radical by something under a radical, so this gives me seven times the square root of six over three. I can't simplify the seven over three, so I leave it alone. The same thing on number 24. I'm gonna go ahead and rationalize, so I'm gonna multiply top and bottom by the square root of three. Now remember, we need to distribute the square root of three to the four and to the square root of two. So this is gonna give me four square root three plus, and again, they're both under the radical, so you'll multiply them together and you get the square root of six. For the denominator, you got a pair of square root threes, so it comes out of the square root. Nothing can be simplified. I can't simplify something out of a radical with something underneath. So this is my final answer. The next two examples are multiplying the denominator by the opposite binomial. So I'm gonna multiply both the numerator and the denominator by three minus the square root of two to both the top and the bottom. All right, so I'm gonna distribute, and in this case, the numerator is just one times that radical, so it's just gonna be three minus the square root of two. Now for the denominator, we're gonna foil it, but remember the shortcut, all we need to do to get our answer is multiply the first two and the last two. We don't really have to do the whole thing because that inner and outer term is gonna cancel out. So once I multiply three times three, I get nine, and then positive square root two times negative square root two is gonna give me negative two. So then now I'll simplify that 
three minus the square root of two stays the same. And then I have to do nine minus two is seven. Nothing else simplifies, so that is your final answer. And then the last example, again, I'm gonna multiply by the binomial with the opposite sign. So one plus the square root of two to both the numerator and the denominator. Now, for the denominator, again, just do first and last. So for the denominator, it's just gonna become one minus two. The numerator, however, I do need to do the whole FOIL or distributive property. So I'll do the first, three times one is three. Then the outer terms, three times the positive square root two is three square root two. Then I'll do the two inner, two times one, square root of two times one is just the square root of two. And then lastly, I'll do square root of two times square root of two, which is just two. Now, on this blue one, you can put in a little assumed one, because that's gonna help us when I go to combine these two middle terms, because I need to add the numbers that are outside. So the final answer here is gonna be, I'm gonna add three plus two, and I'm gonna get five, and then I add the two inner ones, and I get four square root two, and then the denominator is one minus two, so it's negative one. So what you'll probably see is they're gonna get rid of that negative one and divide both the numerator terms. So it'll become negative five minus four square root two. And that would be your final answer. And that is it for the notes on the last part of section two of the prerequisite chapter.